Allah says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقْ On that day, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show His shin to human beings and to creation, وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They will be called to prostrate, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ As a result, their faces will be filled with fear. تَرْحَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً And disgrace will cover their, their bodies. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They used to be called to prostrate, meaning the adhan was given. They heard the adhan. They used to be called to pray. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They used to be called to pray. وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Whilst they were able to, but they did not do so. Ikhwati, what does this mean? Meaning if you fail to pray in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace you and will punish you and throw you to Jahannam in the akhirah. The first thing that people will say why they entered Jahannam was, إِلَّا أَصْحَابَ الْيَمِينَ فِي جَنَّةِ يَتَسَأَلُونَ عَنِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا سَلَقَكُمْ فِي سَقَرَ They will ask the people who have entered Jahannam, مَا سَلَقَكُمْ فِي سَقَرَ What caused you to enter Jahannam? قَالُوا They will say, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We never used to pray. And that is why the scholars of Islam, <coughs> Imam Ahmed rahimahullah says, anyone who misses one prayer intentionally, then he has become a disbeliever. Anyone who misses one prayer intentionally. Our shaykh used to say, if you do not intentionally put the alarm clock on, then you have committed an act of shirk. Meaning alarm clock on for waking up for fajr. You know that you can't wake up for fajr without an alarm clock. You know you need an alarm clock to wake up. But you do not put the alarm clock on, then you have committed an act of shirk. Because salah is the only link between us and Islam. In the authentic narration in Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, he said in authentic hadith, what did he say? He said, what is between a person and Islam and Iman and shirk and kufr? And he, in that hadith he said, Ash-shirk al-kufr, this is authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. Tarku salah is a leaving of salah. Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah said in the, in the explanation of this hadith, he said, this hadith is the greatest evidence that leaving salah is kufr, is, is major disbelief. Why? Because he said between Islam and al-shirk al-kufr, the shirk the kufr. And the shirk and the kufr cannot be anything, it cannot be a small shirk, small kufr, it must be the major shirk, the major kufr. And so that is why, this is the greatest evidence that leaving, is, leaving salah is kufr. In the fourth hadith, in the fourth hadith in Mustadrak of al-Hakim, it is reported that Abdullah bin Shaqiq radiallahu anhu said in the authentic hadith, it's an authentic hadith, the fourth hadith in Musad of al-Hakim, he said that the companions of the Prophet did not used to consider the leaving of any action to be disbelief except salah. So if you leave your salah, ya khwati, you become a kafir. If you don't pray, you're a disbeliever. There's no excuse. Don't tell me, no, no, he's still a Muslim, but on the verge of leaving Islam, no, don't. Don't even come there. If you leave your salah, you become a kafir. For brothers and sisters out there, if your husbands don't pray, then your marriage is invalid. Why? Because then you, if you become a disbeliever, your marriage contracts are invalid. The point I'm trying to make is very serious. Very serious. If you do not pray, you cannot be a believer. You cannot be a Muslim at all. Okay? Very, very critical. Salah five times a day. This is it. It's the minimum requirement of, 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 of action. Minimum requirement of action. You must have this. Can't be lazy on it. You cannot be lazy.